Mark, welcome. I still don't quite get it. I mean, right, inflation thanks. hedge. I mean, that, that's, that's how we think about gold. But energy prices are important too, right? Take some energy to mine gold. Sure. And, you know, John, I think in your introduction, you cover a number of things, <clears throat> very different copper and, uh, and the <clears throat> abnormal factors of in, uh, influencing the copper prices today with China, you know, really in, on the side uh, with all the COVID issues. On gold and, <clears throat> and, and its performance in, in, a, in, a, in unprecedented times of risk, you know, it's not only inflation. We're we're back to the 90, 1980s, um, where you've got deglobalization rather than globalization. A lot of things, you know. I've just listened to part of your program where people are. Some people are saying it's still going to go higher. The markets are great. Everything's going to be fine. But the one thing I'm sure of, it's not. And it takes time for gold to respond to these crises. If you go back 2008. It took until 2011 when we reached the peak uh, huh. gold price. Well, so it takes time. Well, are you affected by crypto at all? Because some people out there think uh, cryptos are, are the new inflation hedge, that they're the new gold. I don't know that uh, they're acting like inflation hedges, but maybe there's some demand there for them. No, I think, uh, you know, <laughs> everyone say, says that, John, but, uh, you know, crypto is not a currency, I'm afraid. Um, so simple as that. Let me go back yeah. to the business then of metals. Tell me about silver. Uh, why is that one off and what's that responding to? Copper has multiple uses, including a lot of practical ones, uh, even where gold doesn't. Why is silver behaving this way? Well, I mean, silver is a, is a sort of a gold follower. Um, and, you know, it's been performing really well recently. There's there's been a lot of speculation about the industrial offtake of silver, and and so it's a slightly different market to gold. A lot of people uh, refer to it as a poor man's gold. I think those three um, commodities are quite different. Uh, copper is definitely, in my mind, the most strategic metal uh, in, in today as far as metals go. Gold is a precious metal, different again. And... Again, they're going to behave differently, but I, you know, you know, Barrick mines gold and copper. Uh, they one's precious, one's very strategic. I think that's the right balance for a modern mining company today. So, how do how does mining operation look for you as we look through the rest of 2022? Given all of the supply chain disruptions that we've seen, and even the shortages uh, of certain materials that are used in refining, uh, from from what I hear, are your supplies looking stable? Are they healthy, or are you going to end up and your competitors, your, your you know your cohort, with shortages that are going to affect both uh, the price of the product that you're putting out and perhaps the price of your stocks? I think I think the the differentiator of who's going to succeed and who's not in this year is going to lie in how you manage your supply chain procurement and logistics and and you really put your finger on it and and so you know I I think this world is going to see stockouts uh, and and it's those people who can manage those companies that can really and by the way the same goes for retail that you've just been talking to. You know, it's how do we manage in in this uh, very dynamic world that we face today? It's very different. It's something we are not used to, and uh, and it's those agile organisations, whether they're mining companies or others, uh, that are going to win in in this environment. Not every day we can draw a line between Walmart and gold miners, but we can do that in this economy. <laughs> Mark Bristow with Barrett Gold. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.